Hey, how's it going, universe? Welcome to another daily movie review. I'm Sean from Zoobox. You know it. You love it. We're going to be talking some serious business today. Today we're going to be talking about 1997's Call the Conqueror, directed by John Nicolella, based on characters in a world by Robert E. Howard, based, uh, adapted by Charles Edward Pogue. The film stars Kevin Sorbo, Tia Carrera, Thomas Ian Griffith, Lightfoot, Roy Brocksmith, Harvey Firestein, Karina Lombard, Edward Tudor Pohl, Douglas Henshaw, and others. The plot synopsis is a barbarian warrior becomes a king when he defeats a king in armed combat and the king's heir conspire to overthrow him and reclaim the throne by resurrecting an evil sorceress. So Call the Conqueror is a character from Robert E. Howard. But... This script is a reworked script from uh, Conan the King. This was supposed to be a third Conan movie, and Arnold Schwarzenegger wanted nothing to do with it. Uh, he was just like, "Nope, don't want to go back there." Kind of want to dis- kind of continually distance himself from that. After the one-two hit of the Destroyer and Red Sonia, he was like, "No, I'm out. I'm done. I'm done with sword and sorcery." Um. But they still wanted to make the movie. They still wanted to go forward with its production. And it took them a long time. It took them like a decade. But finally they get there. They find their call. They find their hero in Kevin Sorbo. Um, who at the time was a big TV star. Right? He was uh, in Hercules. The Legendary. The Legend Continues. Is that what it's called? The Legendary Adventures of Hercules. Whatever the fuck that show is called. You know, I actually did not watch a ton of that show. Believe it or not. Um, I've seen, you know, obviously I've seen a handful of episodes, but I was never like a big Xena or Hercules person. Uh, the legendary journeys. That's what Hercules, the legendary journeys. Um, it's always been a show. I've actually meant to go back and just check out to see if like, would it be entertaining to any degree? I don't know. Maybe it would be, but you know, this is where he was at his, in his career. He would have been in the middle of uh, Hercules, that show. He was in the middle of filming that series when he did Call the Conqueror. And he was kind of a big star. He was kind of a commodity. Uh, and it would make sense, maybe, that you would hire somebody like him. Although I'm curious as to why they just didn't go ahead and recast Arnold Schwarzenegger. Other than maybe they're just like, well, we could, you know, have that series. And then maybe we could just start a new Cole series, right? Because it definitely ends in a way that you could continue this character's story and have more adventures with Cole. Um, and I could, I, you can definitely see where it would fit into being a Conan story. Uh, you definitely could, definitely, definitely could. Uh, I saw this when I when I was a kid. You know, when it came out, so it would have been like eleven. <laughs> so I actually saw this when it was on video when it was released on video. I remember going to like the local corner store or whatever and they had a tape they had the tape there where my dad rented it and the rest is history and i probably enjoyed it i remember thinking when i was a kid that i kind of didn't mind call the conqueror i just liked kind of fantasy stuff you know it was the time i was becoming aware of like lord of the rings and uh the books of david eddings and terry brooks i kind of started reading those really young uh, if you don't know terry brooks wrote the shannara series david eddings um the word is that what it is so he has a bunch of different series, but they all take place in his universe. I'm blanking on it right now. But anyways, so I was just reading a lot of fantasy stuff at the time, kind of getting into it. And just to see any kind of representation of it on screen was kind of, you know, fun. It was thrilling. And also your threshold when you're a kid, not super high, right? I mean, this came out around the same time I think Spawn the movie came out. And when I was a kid, I liked Spawn the movie. I'm not even going to lie to you. I'm not, no fronting, no bullshit. I was totally okay with Spawn the movie. Um, so that's where my taste was at. I did, we're not the most discerning person. You know, you just kind of, when you're 10 years old, you just kind of latch onto things that you think are superficially cool. And even if you kind of know that the movie's not good or it's boring, like you just kind of don't care. At least I didn't. Um, there's a lot of fun things to, to notice. Like when I was older, I was, it has Thomas Ian Griffith who, when I was watching it this time, I had, you know, that, that, uh, that Leonardo DiCaprio meme where he's got the beer and he's like pointing at the TV I had one of those moments because I was like, oh, that's the bad guy. That's Valak from John Carpenter's Vampires. I'd never realized that before. I guess it had been that long since I'd really watched Call. I know I'd seen bits and pieces of it when it was, I think it was on Netflix like a few years ago. And maybe I 
cracked it on when I was going to bed, but this is the first time I've probably sat and watched it in 15, 16 years. How old am I? I was probably like 12 or 13 the last, so maybe 20 years. Holy shit. Maybe like 20 years ago, the last time I actually like watched Call of the Conqueror, like all the way from start to finish, sat down and watched the whole thing. Um, and it's not great. You know, it's, it's, it is mediocre. It does feel like it was cut down to its most bare essentials. It feels kind of compromised in the sense where it does feel like it was cut to conform to a PG 13 movie. Um, they were trying to have kind of this mass appeal, trying to make it more of a populist movie. I guess you could say, you know, it's got a lot of bad one liners and jokes, uh, kind of feels indicative of kind of some of the bad action movies of the mid nineties, the early to mid nineties. It has that flavor and it's definitely trying to use Kevin Sorbo's kind of persona as Hercules to kind of sell it a little bit. Because while I wasn't a huge fan of the show, I am aware of his performance and the way he acted as that character. I am aware of it. I saw enough of that to at least have a notion about it. And it definitely feels more geared to that because it feels more like a TV movie. Which makes sense when you look at who the director was, uh, John Nicolela here. He is mostly a producer, but his f- directing credits are mostly all television. Um, not even some good t- TV too. Not even it's not even all bad. Like he got his start kind of doing Miami Vice, uh, but it's all TV shows and TV movies up until Call the Conqueror. That's like his first feature, his last too. So uh, tragically, it seems like he passed away only like a year after this movie really young too, 52 and that's too bad but yeah he was mostly a producer it seems like that was kind of his bread and butter television producing directing tv movies and the movie has that kind of a feel to it it really does it just does not feel very cinematic and the moments that do feel cinematic or do like attempting at cinematic scope like to give the film some sort of scope uh feel really uh, slight and they use weird gimmicks to try to get it to look bigger than maybe it really is. Like there's for some reason, there's this weird like metal guitar riff that constantly goes out through the movie. Like whenever something's supposed to be really cool or have like, or be a big moment, you get this like little guitar twings, which is funny in like an ironic sense. And the, and a <laughs> cause you're like, what the fuck is going on? what like it's just like so try hardy cool like in the same way that like if you've seen ever seen last action hero which i think is an incredibly underrated movie um the jack slater series has like this really like has like mega death music playing even when it's like an emotional beat like there'll be like a mega death song it has that kind of same vibe because of the movie last action hero is like parodying that about movies and this movie actually is doing that which is funny because this can't comes out after last action hero. So that's how self-aware they were while making this. Um, the performances, everybody's kind of either, either just like really mediocre, like not really giving much or very campy. Like Tia Carrera is incredibly campy. I would say to the point that she, her and most of the bad guys in the movie, most of the villains feel like they're in a different movie than the heroes are. Um, which feels again, kind of like a TV thing, like a TV conceit where they just have, they're just kind of bigger to create a bigger presence or juxtaposition. Cause then if a TV show, you need your villains to be a little bit bigger. So you get the sense that they're bad because you have 45 minutes to deal with them. Right. So they kind of go overboard, especially with the shows like with Hercules and whatnot. And in this, uh, it does not work very well just because of how Low key, everybody is except Kevin Sorbo and Tia Carrere. Everybody else is kind of playing it a little more straight. Even Thomas Ian Griffith, you know, Valak from John Carpenter's Vampires. You think he would be like really, really over the top? He is in Vampires. <laughs> Jack Crow. Uh, you know, he is a vampire, so you think he'd really be giving it here, but no, he gives kind of more of a subtle performance for some reason. It's like a director not being able to control the tone of his movie or what he wants his actors to achieve and impart to the audience. Like he's kind of like, feels like everybody's just doing what they want. There's not a lot of authorship in this movie, you know, feels like a generic action movie. Um, but does that mean it's like awful? I wouldn't go so far to say it's like awful. It's very watchable in its own weird way. 
Um, just even just to see kind of the weird missteps and the weird directorial choices and whatnot. Like I get, like I get some sort of satisfaction from it. I'm not going to lie. Like if I find Cole the Conqueror in a Blu-ray bin for $5, Call the Conqueror is getting purchased, you know? I mean, that's not a very high bar, to be honest with you, because I'd probably do the same thing with Red Sonja. But, yeah, it was it's it was interesting coming to watch this, especially after having watched, you know, the, the Conan movies and Red Sonja and seeing where this fit. I think this is probably more entertaining than Red Sonja. Red Sonja may, might have a slight edge because it's just got that aesthetic, that 80s kind of kitschy, campy vibe. This is a little played a little more straight, even when some of the performances are over the top and some of the stuff that happens in the third act. Uh, it's almost like too self-serious. It doesn't have enough self-awareness. And it kind of needed to. It needed to have a little bit more self-awareness. Whereas something like Red Sonja, while it's not self-aware, um, it's earnest. And it's kind of dumbness. This one is kind of like half and half. It can't decide whether it wants to be have like a meta self-awareness or if it's going to be played really seriously. I just don't think the director was able to kind of modulate that in a way that felt satisfying in the end um, as a story. But as just a moment to moment watching it, it's it's dumb fun. You know, this is one of those, I think, a good a good case study for why uh, marijuana should be legal. <laughs> Why Sean should be able to uh, fucking eat some edibles and watch some fucking cartoons, watch some Cole the Conqueror. For some reason, I don't know why, like the older my wife and I get, not neither of us are like big potheads or ever really were. She a little bit more than me back in her youth, but like I never really was. But now that I'm older, I'm just constantly like, man, I would just love to fucking chill out, put the kid to bed, fucking rip a bong and just really watch something and actually get into real relaxation mode. I feel like, you know, something like maybe an edible, maybe some, some pot gummies or something and call the conquer would be a fantastic pairing for a Saturday night. Honestly, I do. I think some of the, there's parts of this movie that if I was high enough, it would have blown my fucking mind. One of the last times a little, this is totally besides the point. I'm done talking about Cole, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> so I was I was really high one time. My brother got me really high, and we were at the time uh, South Park, The Stick of Truth came out, and I'm fucking and I'm not a you know I didn't smoke very often, like maybe in that at that time it was probably the first time I had smoked in a couple of years, and I'm stoned out of my fucking mind. I'm sitting on the couch, we're playing Stick of Truth, and there's a part in Stick of Truth where you get shrunk down and then you have to fight the underwear gnomes. And while your parents are having sex above you and you have to like dodge your dad's swinging balls and your mom's swing, swinging saggy tits. And I was losing my fucking mind. It was one of the funniest things I've ever said. I couldn't breathe. I've been transported to another reality. I felt like I had like blood vessels popping in my brain as I'm trying to keep it together. I want that experience, but I want it with Cole. Me and Kevin Sorbo. So come on, you know, let's go. If you want to secure my vote, Legalize marijuana. Do it. All right, everybody. Thank you for watching. Thank you for listening. If you'd like to know more about Zoobox, you want to keep up to date with everything Zoobox Nation, there are a bunch of links in the description for Facebook, for Instagram, for my personal Twitter, and also Dan's personal Twitter. It's at Deekster2, so go check out his stuff. Also, if you would like to make a recommendation for one of these daily videos or something for Zoobox Goes to the Movies, throw it in the comments section, and we'll put it on the list and give it a good old considerations. All right? Goodbye.